Hi there, in this video we're going to look at finding the diameter of a circle having been given the circumference. So if you've not done the lesson yet on finding the circumference, you need to do that first, okay? So all my examples today will tell you what the circumference is and we have to find either the diameter or the radius of the circle involved. So let's look at my first example because there's two ways to do it and I'm going to show you the two of them. So the first one, we have the circumference of a tree. Now I know a tree is not a perfect circle, but imagine it with me, okay? So the circumference of the tree is 170. We want to know what the diameter is. Now we can't find the diameter of a tree because unless we chop it down and use the stump. So imagine you had to work out what the diameter of the tree was roughly. This is what we would do. We would get the circumference and then it would be an estimate for the diameter. So we know already that the formula for circumference is C equals pi D, right? We know that our circumference is 170 and we know that we use 3.14 for pi. We just don't know what that diameter is. So we've got 3.14 times something gives us 170. Now in maths, it's all about um, changing the subject and doing the opposites. Now, if I want to know what D is, the thing that's stopping me having D is this multiplied by 3.14. So the opposite of multiplying by 3.14 is to divide by 3.14. So I would do 170 divided by 3.14 and that would give me my diameter. And that would tell me that the diameter is, uh, it would tell me that it is, oh, to a couple of decimal places, it would be 54.140. So let's go 1.1 1 .1 with that, right? 0.14. So that is the diameter of that tree. Now to me, that's an awful lot of work and that's four lines of work in. There is a kind of quicker way to go there. Now, remembering that your formula is C equals pi D, I subbed in my numbers and then changed the formula. What about if I just changed the formula first? So what I really did here, the sum here that I did was I did the circumference divided by pi. So I'm just going to change my formula to circumference divided by pi. So D equals circumference over pi. And that would be quicker because I would just write that sub in the numbers and then my answer. So that could shorten it down to three lines. But the case is, what if you forgot the formula? You'd have to do it this way here that I've done, all right? For the sake of today, we're going to use that formula, d equals c divided by pi. Now, you can write it two ways. I can write it as c over pi, or I can write it as c divided by pi. I'm probably going to write it as a c over pi way, though, okay? I just couldn't get that typed in. So if you already know the circumference, we're going to change the formula. So instead of times by pi, we divide by pi today, okay? So the circumference of this button is 47.1 millimetres. What is its diameter? So remember, we're using the formula diameter equals circumference divided by pi. So our circumference goes on the top, 3.14 on the bottom, and your diameter then is whatever that gives us. Now, we're not going to have lovely answers for all of these. This one does, though, because I've worked it out nicely. This gives us a diameter of 15 millimetres. And when you actually go to buy buttons, you buy them based on what the diameter is. So this would be a 15 millimetre button. Then we've got a wheel. Now, a wheel can turn uh, 131.88 centimetres in one turn. Now, imagine that. See this wee kind of the wee bit where you pump up the air in your tyre? If that was my starting point, in one turn of that wheel, from start to finish, it's saying it can do 131.88. So it's telling you the circumference of the wheel. The distance that that wheel moves along the pavement in one full turn is your circumference, but it's just laid out flat like that along the ground. So we know the circumference is 131.88. We want the diameter. So remember, we're doing diameter is circumference divided by pi today. So we're doing 131.88 divided by 3.14. And if we type that in, that gives us an answer of 42. So my diameter is 42 centimetres. Okay, but what if it doesn't give you a nice answer? If it doesn't give you a nice answer, please remember you can do one or two decimal places. It just happens that the numbers I've chosen are me, uh, is from me giving nice diameters into the sum. Okay, my third example. The cake requires 44 centimetres of ribbon. So imagine when you peel the ribbon off your bit of cake or when you peel the label off your juice bottle, it makes a long rectangle, doesn't it? So the length of that is the circumference of the circle. So the circumference is 44. We need to know the radius. Now, circumference will allow us to get the diameter, but obviously if you know the diameter, you then know the radius easily. So our diameter is circumference over pi which is 44 over 
which gives us a very not nice answer this time. It gives us 14.0127, so I'm going to go with 14 point, uh, 0.01, really, right? It's really close to 14. So your diameter is 14.01. Your radius is half of that. So divide your answer by 2, and it gives us 7.00. So we're going to say 7.0 um, centimetres that it was to one decimal place because it's not exactly seven is it i don't want to say it's exactly seven because that wasn't exactly 14. okay so that would be the radius of cake so if you get the diameter you can always get the radius by half okay so one final tricky example here this time i've got a semicircular table and we've been told that arc length is 188.4 so remember arc is just the the word for a partial a partial part of the circumference so what they're telling us is 188.4 is this bit here right so that is 188.4 we want to know the diameter of the table so remember they've only given us half the circumference so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say well the full circumference of the circle would be that number doubled okay so if you double that number it gives you 376.8 so to get our diameter, remember we're doing our diameter equals circumference over pi. So we put that number over the pi, not the 188 because that's only half of the circle. So we double it first to get the full circle and then we divide it by 3.14. And if you do that, it should give you an answer of exactly 120. So the diameter of this table is 120 centimetres. So that's what's classed as an extension question. So the first couple of questions, I've got eight straightforward ones where I've given you the circumference and the first four want diameter, second four want radius. So that kind of follows my examples. Then pause, unpause, you'll get the answers. And then further on, there are some tricky ones. So there's the answers to the first eight questions. And then these are the extension ones. These are optional. So these are like that table question where you have to find the diameter of the object given only part of the circumference. So I've given you the arc this time. So for the first one, that's your 25. You need to double that to get the circumference. On the second one, the curved bit's 15.7. You need to double it to get the circumference. And on the fourth one, be careful, this is your 47.1. What do you have to do to that number to get the circumference? It's not doubling it. So their extension questions, pause, unpause. There is your answer. So thanks for watching. Good luck.